Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is your word. This is the bread of life. I am your servant. I pray that Holy Spirit, you speak to us and let your word be very clear to each and every one of us. You have told us in your word that those who are heavy laden, if they come to you, you will give them rest. We pray during this week, my Father, as we shall be dwelling in your presence, may our burdens be lifted away. May our burdens be taken away. May our worries be taken away. May our fears be taken away. May the spirit of courage and boldness rise up within us, uh, giving us the confidence to do your will. We give you praise and honor because you are a good God. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we say amen? Can we say a good amen? amen. So let us go to Isaiah 52. We will start there first. And then I'll go to Acts. Um, I'll start with Isaiah 52. I'll read our verse, which is verse 7. And then I'll quickly move to Acts 13. And I'll do some good dwelling in verse 13. So he says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, you, you are God, reigns. Uh, IT, can you give me Acts 13? Give me Acts 13. Acts 13, I'll read from verse 1. It says, Now in the church that was at Antioch, there was a certain, certain prophets. There were certain prophets and teachers. And those teachers and prophets were Barnabas and Simeon, who was also called Nigger, and I think it's good for us to know um, in the Greek in the Greek world where this word was used, nigger meant black people or a black person. So some of us who have done some good reading, we are convinced that Simeon was actually an African, a black man. Uh, Lucius of Cyrene, a Manain, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. Next. As they ministered, and I wanted to pay attention to that. Uh, give me some good coloration for that word, ministering, ministered. That is actually a critical word in that text. The Bible says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. I will do some good work on that, that word. The scripture says, as they ministered. To the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, Now. The question is, who is the Holy Spirit speaking to? The Holy Spirit is speaking to those who are ministering to the Lord. And let me just say something there before I say many other things. Every Christian ministry. Every Christian ministry is twofold. It's twofold. It's twofold in the sense that when God calls you, and I'm using the word calling here in regards to the call to salvation. Mtoto yeyote wa mungu. Mtu yeyote wa mungu. Ambaye ameingia katika ile tuliita jana the great grace. Wala mbo tulikuwa jana tulitumia the word yo grace jana. Tulitumia the word grace jana. Wale wameingia katika yo neema ya mungu kupitia wokovu. Tunasema how watu wameitwa wa 
is the call of God. So when I'm referring to calling, I will not be referring to maybe we, we see calling in terms of uh, you are a pastor or you are this or you are that. No, I, may not, I will not be seeing calling that way. I'm seeing calling as the calling of the children of God. No matter what you do, whether you are in the market or you are in the office or you are in the Joakali or you are in the political arena or you are in the uh, church leadership, wherever you are, as long as you are a child of God, you are called by God. Amen? So that is the sense of calling that I'm providing. And so I'm saying, every calling of God is twofold. Number one, it is a call to reach to the world. It is a call to reach to the world. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about the good news of chapter 52 verse 7. The good news of glad tidings. Malaika walipokuja kutangaza kuzaliwa kwa Yesu Kristo. Walisema tumefanya nini? Hey, what wa Christmas mko wapi? Walisema aje tumewaletea habari jema ambayo ai hiyo <laughs> memory basi ya christmas watu wa mungu mmesahau malaika alipokuja alisema aje aliambia aje wale wachungaji wachungaji wa eh wali chunga eh, la 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 Malaika aliwaambia nini? Nimewaletea habari njema. Habari hii njema ambayo imeletwa kwetu tulisema ni habari ya uzima wa milele, habari hiyo njema ambayo imeletwa kwetu ambayo it... hebu tuangalie ujumbe wa malaika kidogo. Let's just go there. Let's go to Let's go to that, that uh, text where, thank you, thank you. Hey, Zito, I do go so. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings. Ambondi iko chapter 52 verse 7. The same thing. Chapter 2 verse 7 inasema aje? Inasema good news. I bring you glad tidings of good things. Na hiyo glad tidings ndiyo hii. Hebu nipeleke hapo Luke. What does he say? Do not be afraid for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy. Praise the Lord. And by the way, the church of Jesus Christ should be, should be the most joyous community ever. Ever ever in the world. Which will bring, which will be to all people. It's good tidings of great joy. But you see, we have to make sema ata watu ambo wa wakanisani ikifika wakate wawa kutaka kuburudika. Wanenanga kuburudika wapi? Ala wa, ata wa, watu wa kanisa. Kuna watu wa kanisa mbao mtu wanakuja wibada jumapili. Alafi kifika masanane masatisa hapa wanasema. Hey, mtaka nitoke kidogo nikafanya nini? Nika burudika. Kita kuburudika naenda wapi? Anaenda kuburudika egesa. Kwa sababu hapa ibada tulipo kuwa na ibada hapa e, mchana hii ya subuhi. Ha, hakukuwa na burudani. Ilikuwa ni nini? Tunavumiliana tumachungaji. People greet their teeth through the presence of God. But the presence of God should be a place of good tidings of great joy. Because that is what the Lord has given to us. 
kama hujapewa vitu vingine na mimi namshukuru Mungu afeanangi vitu vyote unaweza kukosa pesa unaweza kukosa gari because hata mimi leo sijakuja na gari nimekuja na mtu wa boda akaniweka pale nikaingia lakini kukuja kwangu kwa mtu wa boda akuzuii ai 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 akuzuii habari njema iliyo ndani yangu haleluya kwa sababu hiyo habari njema nimepewa na Bwana Yesu na hakuna mtu anayeweza kutoa ndani yangu haleluya hiyo tumepewa so it is to tell that good tidings to to the people and it is not just good tidings it is not good tidings about eh eh bei ya petroli imeshuka because nasikia sasa hizi wanasiasa kila saa wakiuliza wanasema when we get to power power gani power gani mnaongelelea kila saa when we get to power the things are bad now but when we when we get to power we have the power the people of god have the power we are not waiting for a time when we shall be in the power and who unto you if you are waiting for a certain politician to get to power so that then you can be happy you are the most miserable human being if you are waiting for a politician to make you happy the bible says good tidings of great joy so you have it you have it you have it hii sio habari jema ya bei ya mafuta kushuka ama mafuta ya chakula niliona eh, clip nyingine kwa video kwa, kwa, kwa social media ambayo mzee wa boma akienda kulala anaenda kulala na mafuta ya chakula <laughs> eh? kwa hivyo mama akitaka kupika anakuja <laughs> abiniwe mafuta ya kupika umeona eh? kwa sababu ni kubaya kwa hivyo hii si habari ya mafuta kushuka hii si habari ya unga kushuka hapana ni habari ya wokovu ni habari ya uzima wa milele na hilo ndio jukumu ambalo watu wa Mungu wamepewa hiyo habari ifike pale nje it says which shall be to all people watu wote so that is the first fold the second fold that good news should actually be the, the, the second fall of that calling that me, that calling should be unto the lord so take me to, to yes thank you thank you so we are called to minister to the world to tell them about good tidings but also we are called to minister to the lord now the church of jesus christ has missed on ministering to the lord we don't minister to the lord we run around we do other things we preach we sing if you look at our even in our church churches today most of the singing that we do is about what entertaining people is entertainment so it is about which choir does does the best and it is about which choir receives the most clap na kuna kwa wengine ikiimba mpaka watu wanasimama inabidi sasa program akikuja abaseme tupigie wakobe tuwapigie wote makobi kwa pamoja so because it is we are focused on entertainment but if we realize that even my my ministry now as i'm preaching to you i'm also ministering to the lord if i realize that way then i will do it with fear and trembling give me philippians give me philippians chapter 2 verse 12 and 13 what does it say um but philippians chapter 2 It says for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure verse uh, verse 14 no no give me from verse 10 just start from verse 10 it says that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bow of those things in heaven and of those things on earth and of those under the earth there is that bit of bowing next and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is lord 
the glory of God the Father, verse 12, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And then verse 13 says, Because it is God who works in you. So if you knew you are calling, take me back to Acts, if you knew you are calling, was to minister to the Lord, then how would your ministry look like? And remember today, we are looking to the broader category. I gave three categories. The first one is the critical importance of the message. The second one is the context of the message. The third one is the direction of the message. So today, I begin to explore the context of the message. So what is the context of the message? Because we have been given a message that we should take outside there and proclaim it and tell it to the world. Because when we tell it to the world, it will bring great joy. But the question is, within which context should that happen? And number one, the context within which there is a sending out. There is a going out to take the good news. The context within which the going out to send good news, to tell others about it, is number one, administration to the Lord. It happens within the context of administration to the Lord, which basically is prayer. Actually, that is the language for prayer. When we say, as they minister to the Lord, it is the same as said, they were praying. So number one, the context within which the message goes out is the context of prayer. And here he says, not just prayer, but prayer and fasting. Now what is fasting? I've explained ministration which is to the people, to the Lord. But what is fasting? Fasting is basically denial. It's basically denial. What, what, what it says is, for you to be able to minister to the Lord without distraction, then you have to deny yourself have to do what? Deny yourself. And that is a difficult language. I think I can actually stay there for some time. Because we are happy going out. We are happy when there is an opportunity to preach. We go out there. We sing. We dance. We celebrate. We put a banner about our church. A banner like this. We tell people we are ASC Umoja. But wait a minute. Where are we coming from? What is our context? What is our environment? Where are we coming from? Now, when they continued later on in this, uh, the book of Acts, you will know the story of the sons of Sceva. What happened with the sons of Sceva? They, they knew that uh, Paul was casting demons. The, actually, the Bible tells us they were the sons of a priest. Walikuwa ni watoto wa kuhani. So wakangalia Paulo. Anakemea mapepo. Katika jina la Yesu. Wakasema ha? Hata sisi tunaheza. We Paulo usione kama wendi. Wendi unaheza kumanya imamo peke yako. Hata sisi tuko. And by the way. <laughs> that is the language between. The mainstream churches. And the Pentecostal churches. That is the language we have today. Sindio? Because wale watu wa Pentecost ndio wao ndio wanapanga na makrusedi huko wao ndio wanakwanga na huko wana wanakemea mapepo yai na sisi wa AC tunasema ah kwani iko nini hata sisi tunaweza enda kwani iko nini alafu unatoka unaenda ndugu yangu sema unatoka unaenda unatoka unafanya nini it is 
Then some of the itinerant Jewish, you know what itinerant means? <laughs> itinerant in Amanisha, ni watu wa kutembea hapa na pale. Sama kutembea hapa na pale. Itinerant Jewish exorcists. Walikuwa kazi yao wanatoka hapa, wanakemea mapepo, wanaenda pale, wakakemea na mapepo, wanaenda pale, wanakemea na mapepo. They took upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who are evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the name, by, by the Jesus who Paul preaches. And next, and then there were sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest who did so. Next. And the evil spirit answered and said, Say my evil spirit. Say my pepo. Yeah, because my pepo in a jua. Who's that? My pepo in jui. By the way, to look at my shit, we were high school. Kuna want to attack about when I do a kid to go to where we. Who to a one than ni Mungu, mtu wa pili ni shetani, mtu wa tatu ni wewe. Say to them, Jesus, we know. And by the way, the word know there is the word gnosis, which is knowledge by experience. We in other words they said, we have experienced Jesus. Kwa neno mengine in Greek tunasema ni tu isundu Yesu usamasia yani we know Yesu akianza kukabiliana nasi tunajua vile watu nasikia <laughs> and Paul we also know in other words we have encountered Paul we have encountered Jesus we know the power of Jesus we know the power of Paul now the question is <laughs> The question is, who are you? Ebuliza jirani yako yoswa. Muliza yoswa ali. That is a fundamental. Iyo tundu neidanga fundamental question. That one is a fundamental question. Sema fundamental. Iyo ni fundamental question. Who are you? Na hakuna kitu kibaya kama kuulizo hivyo na mapepo. Mutu yote anaeza kakuuliza. Malaika. Wana Yesu asifiwe sana. Wakati Balam alikuwa anaenda kulaani watu wa mungu. Bibili inasema. Malaika alitokelezea. Lakini nabi wa Mungu hakuwa anaona malaika. Lakini punda anaona malaika. Malaika katokelezea mara ya kwanza, punda akaenda huko. Malaika katokelezea tena, punda akaenda huko. Malaika ikafika mahali kulikuwa na street eh, eh, corridor. Malaika akasimama mbele ya punda. Punda inaona malaika na nabi haoni malaika. Bibili inasema mpaka punda akajisukuma hivi akamuumiza mguu. Unajua vile malaika alimwambia Balaam. Malaika alimwambia Balaam kama sio huyu punda ningekuua. <laughs> Asante. Unasikia kuna mtu anasomanga maandiko hapa. Napenda wakati watu wanasoma maandiko. Malaika alimwambia kama sio huyu punda wewe ningekuua leo. When we remain in a context of prayer, we have the power. Of, take me to that text. Who are you? We know Paul. We know Jesus. Um, thank you. Thank you, IT. Take me back to Acts. Malia na muambia, who are you? We know Jesus and we know Paul. But who are you? That question, who are you? It means, number one, walipo waangalia. Wale mapepo walipo waangalia wale watu waliona hawa watu wako powerless hawana kitu sema kitu hai sema substance eh. 
we want to go out there and take the gospel to the people lakini ndani yetu hakuna kitu there is no substance sasa mapepo ikikuangalia namna hii inasema na wewe ni nani wewe pepo akikuuliza hivyo utamwambia wewe ni nani na by the way ikifikia mahali pa pepo anakuuliza hiyo swali si ujue wewe hauko yani wewe you are not there hata hauko because jana tulisema ya kwamba malaika wa Mungu anapiga nini kituo kuwazingira watu wa Mungu imefika wapi mpaka pepo anakukonfront anakuuliza wewe ni nani si ujue hauko yani ujue hauko hakuna report hmm? hmm? who are you Hebu nipatie 16 ndio uone ukiulizwa who are you vile unaambiwa Then the man in whom the evil spirit was lived on them overpowered them overpowered it means you have no power and prevailed over them defeated them Now remember the message of the person bringing the good tidings in 52 verse 7 anasema anakuja na kuambia good news our god reigns by the way where god reigns watu wa Mungu hawezi wakakuwa overpowered. Pigia makofi bwana Yesu. Where God reigns we cannot be overpowered. Where God reigns we cannot be prevailed over. Shetani hawezi akatuweka chini and where God reigns hawezi kuraliwa nguo. Hebu nipatie hiyo vazi ya kuraliwa nguo. <laughs> nipatie hiyo vazi ya kuraliwa nguo. Hapo tu acts acts. He leaped on them Eh, prevailed against them so that so that they fled out of their heart <laughs> oh my god oh, oh mungu atusaidie <laughs> unajua ni, wale watu wataenda kilifi na sio kuwatisha na watisha nataka nikuje huko nataka nikuje huko kilifi kama tourist Nite, <laughs> eh mimi sitakuja sitakuja atikutembea pamoja na nyinyi Nikuje tu hiyo village mahali muko ni, ni, ni zagae zagae tu huko. Alafu katika harakati zangu za kuzagaa kama mtalii because hiyo sitakuwa kama sitakuwa kama pasta, nitavaa kinyasa, nitavaa macho ine zile za kuja. Sinojua huko ni tourist area. Navaa kinyasa yangu <laughs> na open shoes. Alafu natembea kule mtaani kama na bounce hivi. Alafu nikutane na wewe kama umefukuzwa uko naked. Alafu najaribu kuniambia pasta nimefukuzwa. They were not only naked, they were wounded. What is the problem? Let us go back mali pa pale ministering to the Lord. Because as you minister to the Lord, what do you receive? You receive power. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. You receive what? Power. And number two, as you minister to the Lord, you receive your identity. hiyo ni kitu tumekosa. Na hiyo ndiyo kitu ambao mapepo wanatumaliza nayo. Nikwambie kitu vile mapepo wanamaliza anga watu na identity. Hey, wewe umesikia kuna watu ambao wamesikia wito wa Mungu. You've sensed the calling of God. Unasikia anga hata ukiwa kwako nyumbani wewe ni mama, sasa zile unashughulikia watoto. Unasikia kuna kitu ya Mungu iko ndani yako. Lakini kwa sababu ya kukosa kuchukua msimamo na kukua um, what do you say bold kuchukua msimamo wa maisha yako unajikuta ya kwamba kile kitu ambacho unahisi kiko ndani yako kama ni uimbaji ni kuhubiri ni kuhudumu ama ni kufanya nini kile kitu kiko ndani yako unasikia akitoki kimekwama kimezama hakiko na kwa sababu hicho kitu ambacho Mungu ameweka ndani yako akitokelezei ama akitoki kwa nguvu unaanza ku struggle na identity. Sema identity. Ndio kwa sababu mapepo waliwauliza nyinyi ni nani? And by the way, let me tell you something. Spirit of competition in the ministry rises from a context of lack of identity. 
Wakati unaonanga waimbaji wakishindana hapa kuimba. Nani amepewa maiki huyu hakupewa nini? Alafu kwa sababu unapewa maiki unaenda nyumbani umevura kama mandazi kwa sababu hukupewa. Hiyo hiyo kufura kwa sababu ya kutokupewa maiki sio kufura kwa sababu hujapewa maiki it is a question of your identity because if you know yourself if your identity is clear if you know you are a child of god hata upewe mic hata usipewe hata ulid praise hata usilid hata uhubiri hata usihubiri utaenda nyumbani ukijua mimi ni mtoto wa Mungu because my identity does not depend on what i do my identity depends on god hallelujah na mapepo inatumia watu hapo. Unaulizwa who are you? Who are you? Inamaanisha for me to confirm who I am, ni lazima nipewe hiyo maki ni ubiri. For me to confirm who I am, ni lazima niimbe. Ndio nikiimba nijulikane mimi ni nani. Mapepo watakuuliza who are you? The question of identity is a question of belonging to God we know Jesus we know Paul who are you I'm looking at my time here yes so we know Jesus we know Paul who are you so context is number one, you receive power from God what is this powerful Now, take me to Acts 13. We'll, we'll get back there. Uh, take me down there kuna around verse 5 6 7 hapo. Mali there's an encounter between Paul and some guy there. Um, and when they arrived, Salamis they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant, but that is John Mark. Eh? Next. Now they had gone through the island to Paphos they found a certain sorcerer sema sorcerer <laughs> i'm talking now to people who are going to the field uko wa field eh hautakutana na watu wanauza smoky kwa barabara unajua 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 hapa Nairobi ukienda kuhubiri eh unakutana na ukiingia kwa piloti unakuta wamama wanafua nguo <laughs> ama hapo kwa piloti kama hujaingia kuna mtu anapuzia smoki ama hapo kando kuna mtu anauza mahindi au sio watu ambao utakutana nao ukiana mission field look at the characteristics of the people you are meeting he is called who a satan sorcerer mchawi what does this call for It calls for this what we are doing this week. And that's why I thank God for this church because of setting this time to pray. Kwamba kanisa alijasema kilivye ha twende tuarisim. Hapana, kanisa limechukua muda wa kufanya nini? Watu wa Mungu waombe kukuwe na preparedness psychologically, ukuwe set aside. Ndio hata kama utaenda, umeombea wale wamefanya nini? Wataenda. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. That is why we need power because there are na huyu jamaa anaitwa Satan sorcerer a false prophet kwa hivyo ni mchawi kitu cha kwanza <laughs> kitu cha pili ni nabii wa uongo kitu cha tatu ni muyahudi na anaitwa Bar Jesus anaitwa Bar means son of mwana wa nani yeah yeah next who with the proconsul is the name for a leader such as paulus that is the name of the proconsul um, give me give me verse 8 verse 8 verse but elimas the sorcerer okay with his stood them who was weir seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith all the time the work of satan is to turn people away from 
faith. So Satan does not want people to hear the word. And because he doesn't want people to hear the word, he is going to use any means. Wachawi, waganga, warogi, majini, kila kitu. Ili watu wasisikie. And that is why we need power. I want you to see how Paul deals with that. Next. Uh, then Saul, the Saul, who also is called Paul. What is that? Underline your statement, Yote. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Because of verse 1. They were ministering before the Lord. That is where power comes from. So Paul was filled by the Holy Spirit. And he looked intently. That word intently is used there intentionally to show that Paul was not afraid. Alimuangalia macho kwa macho. Kuna watu wengine nonanga tukienda uduma wakianza kukemea mapepo. Wewe una, ndio unajipea shughuli za hiyo unajifanya kuna kasimu ulikuwa unapiga sio kasimu ulikuwa unapigiwa unaogopa hiyo mapepo isitoke kwa hiyo mtu ikuingie kwa hivyo unajipea shughuli eh? <laughs> unajipea shughuli unakaa kando eh Paulo akujipatia shughuli alimwangalia intently at him next 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 verse next verse verse 10 and said oh full of all deceit and all fraud. You son of the devil. And I'm address kabisa bila uoga. You enemy of all righteousness. And I'm characterized. Why? Because I'm gonna power. When you have the Holy Spirit, you have the spirit of discernment. So you know what you are dealing with. You are dealing with deceit, with fraud. You are dealing with evil. You are dealing with all enemy of righteousness. And then he says, will you not cease to pervert the straight ways of the Lord? Perversion. So you'll be dealing with those spirits as you go out to preach. You'll be dealing with the, with the spirit of deceit, with the spirit of proud, proud, with the spirit of perversion. Those are the spirits we deal with when you go to the field. That is why preparation here is important. Next. And he said, and now indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you and you shall be blind. You speak with power. You speak with authority. You speak. You speak. Number one is power. Number two, nile ni meseva, confidence. Ile, 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 ile. Hata wawo kitembea unajisikia. Jisijui kama ushe kutembea ukajisikia ume, umebeba kakitu. Unajua kuna watu wengine unatembea anga hivi ni kama ni, ni bungulu, yani empty, yani ndani hakuna kitu. Hata wewe unajua unaweza jisikiza hata wewe useme na kweli. Ni nini naendelea anga hapa? Hata wewe ukitembea unajisikia huna kitu. Umepigika. Ushai kupigika, unajua kupigika. <laughs> eh? Ushai kutana mtu ambaye hana kitu ndani yake. Amewezwa. Amelemewa, amekuwa prevailed upon. Amepigwa, ameraruliwa, ako naked, hana kitu. So number one is power. Number two is that identity which gives you confidence. And that is as a result of verse one when we minister to the Lord. And number three, which I'm going to finish with. So number one is power. Number two is identity. And number three is proclamation. Proclamation. You are able to proclaim the name of the Lord. And I want to keep to continue reading there. Uh, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and immediately a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Verse 10, verse, verse 12, verse 12, then the proconsul believed. Pigia bwana yesu makofi. Unajua makofi unaipiga kwa sababu ujaelewa spiritual wofe ambayo imefanyika hapo. Unapiga hiyo makofi kwa sababu ujaelewa spirit of warfare ambayo imefanyika hapo. If you understand verse 11, then you can understand verse 12. Everybody of verse 11? Everybody of verse 11? The hand of the Lord is upon you. And you shall be blind. What is happening there? The battle belongs to the Lord. Your purpose is to just do what? To proclaim. Now, I want you to say, I want you to know this. 
when we proclaim in the spiritual realm, what we are actually doing is we are enforcing. Aye. Tigia bana yesu makofi. When we are proclaiming, we are enforcing the reign of God. So you can go to a home where there is no what? Salvation. Where there is no healing. Where there is, a, there is poverty. Kuna njaa. Lakini ukiingia pale. Lakini utaingia hivyo bure bure. Utakuwa kama wale sons of Skeva. Utaingia with what? With power. With knowledge of yourself. Who you are. And number three, you are proclaiming. Aye. This thing is so good. And when you proclaim, you enforce. So when we are saying, the person coming with good tidings, anakuja kusema ya kwamba, jamani, vita vime shindwa. We are actually proclaiming. Oh, We are not, we don't go to the mission field from a point of uh, fighting to look for victory. Apana, we are going to the mission field from a point of victory. We are already victorious. The battle has been won. Hallelujah. Mapepo ya meshindwa. Majini ya meshindwa. Uchawi umeshindwa. Uganga umeshindwa. Majini ya meshindwa. Tunapo enda hapo tunatangaza ya kwamba. Mungu anatawala hapa. Sio majini natawala. Sio uganga. Oh, hallelujah. So when we proclaim, we enforce. And that is what Paul does. That is what Paul does in verse 11. So what does he do? He enforces. He says, the hand of the Lord is upon you. In other words, alimuachanisha na mungu. We unajua, unajua hii vita siwa vietu, vita ni vya nani? Vita ni vya mbwana. Bwana esu wa sifiwe. Ukimuachia mbwana vita, vita atapigana. Lakini ukijifanya wewe ndiyo. Utapigwa utaenda ukiwa uji nyumbani. Uta, Utashutuko kodani ya SGR na una nguo. <laughs> eh, baka watu wana kuambia kwa numekua mwenda wazimu hapana. Sio wenda wazimu ni kile kitu umeona hapo. Unatoroka unazau kama una nguo. But the Paul enforced. And when Paul enforced the reign of God, what happens in verse 12? Then, the proconsul. The proconsul is like the wale wame grow in the 90s, kuna watu walikuwa neto ma PC, provincial commissioners. Ambea alikuwa nasimamia a whole province of like a four, five, six, seven, or even ten districts. The proconsul were believed. Why did he believe? When he saw what had been done. <laughs> what was done? That sorcerer who was proclaiming himself to be mimi ndio bazo wa mta. Uyo prof, uyo, uyo, uyo mchawi, anakuwa blind, baka anaanza kuongozwa. Hakitavuta njia, anashikuwa na mkono waende nyumbani. Wakati prokozo waliona hiyo, being astonished at the teaching of the, now hiyo teaching of the Lord ndiyo nini? Enforcing, enforcing, enforcing. We need God's work. Let us rise up on our feet. I want us in one minute or two, we just want to say, God, we are not going in our power. We are not going in our identity. The church does not exist because of itself. We are telling God that our work is to enforce. As we proclaim the reign of God, we enforce the reign of God. And I, I'm, I'm feeling convinced that we need to enforce the reign of God in our families. We are going to do that for two minutes. Kuna familia ambazo zimepigwa. Kuna watu ambao wamepitia mambo magumu. Ni kama wana operate from a place of defeat. The Spirit of God is saying, let us enforce the reign of God in our families, in our lives. I want you to proclaim. Just open up your mouth and pray and say, I enforce the reign of God. I proclaim. Sema ni natangaza utawala wa mungu. Katika maisha yangu ni natangaza. Katika familia yangu ni natangaza. Katika katika maalifangu vakazi ni natangaza utawala wa mungu. Mahali majini meingia. Mahali uchawi umeingia. Mahali sosari meingia. Mwamie mungu unatangaza. Mwambie Mungu Mwambie Mungu unatangaza. Mwambie Mungu unatangaza. Utawala wa Mungu mahali kumeingia uchawi. 
bali kumeingia sorcery ya aina yoyote paulo alimwambia yule mchawi the hand of the lord is upon you the hand of the lord is upon you nikitanga utangaze the hand of the lord upon your house the hand of the lord upon your family the hand of the lord upon your ministry the hand of the lord the hand of the lord the hand of the lord mkono wa bwana utapiga yule mchawi mkono wa bwana utapiga yule mrogi mkono wa bwana utapiga yule mwenye machini mkono wa bwana tangaza mkono wa bwana tangaza mkono wa bwana tunatangaza mkono wa bwana katika hili kanisa tunatangaza mkono wa bwana katika maisha yetu mkono wa bwana Paulo alimwambia yule mchawi mkono wa bwana uko juu yako mkono wa bwana uko juu yako na mimi natangaza jioni ya leo wale wamekuwa wakipingana na wewe wale wamekuwa wakikupiga vita mkono wa bwana uko juu yao mkono wa bwana uko juu yao mkono wa bwana uko juu ya wachawi mkono wa bwana uko juu ya wakanga mkono wa bwana uko juu ya wanaokutakia mabaya in the name of jesus